Good evening and Merry Christmas. My name is Glenn and I'm one of the pastors here. Welcome to St. Joe United Methodist Church. I want to make you aware that in just a moment in our announcement videos, you'll hear more about the offering tonight and specifically the Bishop's Christmas offering. In your bulletin that you received as you came in tonight, there's an envelope. If you put whatever offering you want for the Bishop's Christmas offering in that envelope, it will get to the Bishop's Christmas offering. If you don't, we will consider it year-end giving here for St. Joe, and we will be very grateful for that. But I uh, just want to make you know when that time comes that that is what is available. I also hope that if you have a chance, you'll sign in and leave especially your email address for us in the friendship books that are in each pew. That way uh, you can get other communications from us at St. Joe UMC and St. Joe at the Y. With that, welcome and Merry Christmas, and here are our announcements. <laughs> Well, welcome to worship and Merry Christmas. What a difference a year makes. Only a year ago, it was a silent and frozen night all across the city of Fort Wayne. Following a couple years of pandemic and dissension and division, the Furies had laid their hands to the ship that is St. Joseph United Methodist Church. Our friends call us St. Joe and St. Joe at the Y. It had been a difficult season, but again, what a difference a year makes. For one year later, we stand growing in mission, growing in our faithfulness, growing in our capacity to fund new things. God is present and God is good. And I am so thankful for the faithfulness of the folks who are St. Joe and St. Joe at the Y. For you all, in all of your giving and in all of your serving, in the beginning of sharing your own faith and faith stories, you all are empowering a new season and a new chapter in the ministry that God is laying out here before us. Thank you. As we look to this new year that is coming just right around the corner, there's a great opportunity to kick it all off together. Yeah, Pastor Glenn, I'm so excited about our New Year's Eve um, day here at the church. So we're going to start with a 10 o'clock service all together, one service here at St. Joe UMC. It's going to be just a really great time of just worshiping together as a blended service. We can't wait to see you there right at 10 o'clock. But then at 1130, if you head on over to the Jackson R. Lehman YMCA, we're doing a countdown to noon. So for those who don't want to stay up to midnight like myself... <laughs> and want to still ring in the new year, um, Faith in Motion is putting on a great program from 1030 to 1230. We're going to count down to noon. I've seen their dance routine. I've seen the plans. It's going to be such a, an exciting time to celebrate um, the new year and bringing in 2024. So I hope you'll head on over to um, Jackson Airline and YMCA uh, right after service here and so we can celebrate the new year together. 2024 balloons yeah. dropping. Yeah, it's going to be a lot of fun, a lot of blowing up of balloons beforehand. <laughs> of course, as we end the year, we're thankful for all the year-end giving and gifts you want to make. And that hopefully you can make those either today, you can make them online and in other ways. We're thankful for those. We also want to think about others in this season, not just the ministry and mission of St. Joe UMC. And so we invite you today on Christmas Eve to be thinking of the Bishop's Christmas offering. If you're joining us at 4 p.m. at the Y or 7 or 11 p.m. at St. Joe UMC, you'll see a video right after this from our bishop describing that offering and the ways it serves and helps children around our state. We hope you'll think about those acts of generosity there and about what commitments to faithfulness you might make in the year to come to bless the ministry of this church and this congregation. But that's enough of that, because today's Christmas. And so, Pastor Ashley, Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. And Merry Christmas to Merry you all. Christmas. Thank you, United Methodists of the Indiana Conference. This is my eighth Christmas celebration with you, and you have been supporting the Bishop's Christmas offering for eight years generously. This offering blesses ministries that touch children, young people, and families in the state of Indiana, in the communities where our churches are located, and across the globe. 
I have a cube that reminds me of God's blessings every day. On this cube, there are many messages. One that says, yes, we can change the world. Together, we can make a difference. And through the Bishop's Christmas offering, we have been making a difference. Thank you so very much. Continue to join me in lifting up other families along the way. God bless you and be encouraged. so much for some beautiful music this, this evening. Let us pray. Emmanuel, God with us, most of all tonight, your light lifts up our hearts, our spirits, and our voices. We give you thanks for your birth long ago and presence with us always. Your hope is more trustworthy than our promises. Your peace is deeper than our prayers. Your joy teaches us to sing even when we want to cry. Your love is wider than the chorus of the galaxies. And yet your star shines on us now in the church which has become a major. Amen. Come. Faithful watchers, and behold, your salvation is here. We greet the wondrous light, our Messiah, Christ the Lord. 
We have waited and watched, longing for God to show up and save us from the suffering and pain in our world. We agree to wondrous light, the fulfillment of our shocking hope. We have waited and watched, longing for peace to reign among us, a peace that removes unjust barriers, frees us from sin, and binds us together as neighbors, family, and friends. We agree to wondrous light, the bringer of our just peace. We have waited and watched, longing for joy that is persistent in the face of grief, lament, chaos, and oppression that weigh on us day in and day out. We agree to wondrous light, the source of our fierce joy. We have waited and watched, longing to encounter the love that transforms us, the love that is now here among us. First as a babe in nature, then as a teacher, a friend, and our Savior. We greet to wondrous light, love incarnate, who has come to save us and transform us. Amen. Amen. Let's all stand as we sing together number 245, the first Noel.
invite the Aldred Ash families forward to the lighting of the Advent candles. longing for hope and yearning for deliverance. The prophet Isaiah declared, the people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in the land of deep darkness and on them a light has shined. For a child has been born to us, a son given to us. Authority rests upon his shoulders and his name is Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. This is out of Isaiah. Tonight we come seeking hope, peace, joy, and love. And we find these things in a child. God made flesh as a baby in a manger. A baby who is both the beginning and the end of our salvation. Who dwells with us even now. Our Emmanuel, God with us. We live as people in the in-between who celebrate the arrival of the light that shines in lost and broken places as we wait for the day when we will live in the fullness of God's kingdom. We light these candles as signs of our shocking hope, our just peace, our fierce joy, and the love that transforms us, and Jesus Christ, our wondrous light. May the light burning in our hearts guide us, comfort us. Protect us. Tend us in all seasons and circumstances, reminding us that day and night, in the light and in the darkness, God is with us. Our salvation has come. Amen. Sunday, day after day at St. Joe United Methodist Church and St. Joe at the Y, we worship our God through our service, through our witness, through our going and our doing and our music and our worship, and all of it is an offering. Tonight, in a unique and in a special moment, we bring our offerings, our tithes, our giving to God to bless not only the ministry of this church in this community, but children and youth across the state. With that, in our, with that in our mind and heart, and in that spirit, we invite our ushers to come forward at this time to receive the Christmas Eve offering.
us pray. On this sacred Christmas Eve, we come together. May you bless these offerings that they may spread love and joy and hope to those in need. And may this generosity reflect the spirit of Christ's birth. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. A reading from Luke chapter 2, verses 1 to 20. In those days, Caesar Augustus declared that everyone throughout the Roman Empire should be enrolled in the tax lists. This first enrollment occurred when Quirinius governed Syria. Everyone went to their own cities to be enrolled. Since Joseph belonged to David's house in the family line, he went up from the city of Nazareth in Galilee to David's city, called Bethlehem in Judea. He went to be enrolled together with Mary, who was promised to be married to him and who was pregnant. While they were there, the time came for Mary to have her baby, and she gave birth to her firstborn, a child, a son, and wrapped him snugly and laid him in the manger because there was no place for them in the guest room. Nearby, Shepherds were living in their fields, guarding their sheep at night. The Lord's angels stood before them, and the glory of the Lord showed around them, and they were terrified. And the angels said, Don't be afraid. Look, I bring good news to you, wonderful, joyful news for all people. Your Savior is born today in David's city. He is the Christ, the Lord. And this is a sign for you. You will find a newborn baby wrapped snugly in lying in a manger. And suddenly a great assembly of the heavenly forces with, was with the angels praising God. They said, glory to God in the highest and on earth peace among those whom he favors. When the angels returned to heaven, the shepherds said to each other, let's go right now to Bethlehem to see what's happened. Let's confirm what the Lord has revealed to us. They went quickly and found Mary and Joseph and the baby lying in the manger. And when they saw this, they reported what they hadn't told about the child. And everyone who heard it was amazed at these things the shepherds told them. Mary committed these things to memory and considered them carefully. The shepherds returned home, glorifying and praising God for all that they had heard and seen. And everything happened just as they had been told. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Thank you, ushers. Let's pray. Oh God, we recall on this night when those first Noels were sang, the first announcements of the birth of the one who would be King of Kings and Lord of Lords. The one who was before all things, the one who is very God of God and light of light and yet has stepped into our human condition, the one who knows our weakness and forgets not our frame. Oh God, in our hearts, transport us, transport us to the night when the mystery that moves the cosmos stepped into human flesh and dwelled among us. Take us back to that night of those first Noels through the song that is sung and the word that is proclaimed. Oh God, send your spirit to this place that we might in word and deed speak of and honor the one who we regard as Lord. It is in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
Christmas Eve, our spirits should soar in that way. And it is a wonderful thing to, in the season, be surrounded by the scent of clove and cinnamon. It is a good thing in the season to have that aroma of sugar cookies wafting in our direction. Crockpot slowly stewing, ham loaf gently cooking. Whatever your poisons might be in the season, it's a wonderful thing to consider. It is a wonderful thing to stop and think of angels singing, of God descending. But in all of that story, I'm convinced there's something missing. There's something that is not quite in the place it might be. Something lacking that has not been named. I've looked for it. And I've not heard it. I've not heard it when we sing those soaring songs of peace. Light, silent night. Holy night. As we'll sing in just a bit, I've not heard it. I've not seen it in the Charlie Brown Peanuts Christmas special. <laughs> Nowhere could I find it. And in not one manger scene, not one nativity set, in all of these years have I ever seen one that had this element which must have been essential to the first Christmas. Manure. <laughs> Some of you are looking at me like, I kind of like this guy, and I'm sorry he did this, because we thought we'd have him around in 2024, but maybe not now, after Christmas Eve. Some of you are looking at me like, uh, I've never met this guy before. Who is he mentioning manure on Christmas Eve? But I assure you, it was an essential element of the occasion. I happen to know this. There's very few things I'm expert about. <laughs> but I'm a farm boy. And I know a thing or two, no pun intended, about manure. In fact, when I was at Purdue at the Wesley Foundation Campus Ministry, we took a bike trip all across the state of Indiana. We dipped our back tires in Lake Michigan and we rode our bicycles all the way across the state of Indiana to the southern border. We could see Kentucky across the river and we finally dipped our front wheels in. My claim to fame on that bike trip with 15 or so other Purdue students was that as we were biking through the country, we would get hit by the aroma of some sort of agricultural endeavor. And other people on the trip would say, what is it, Glenn? And the farm boy would know. That's dairy cattle right there. Ooh, chickens. Oh, I smell hogs. No, no, this next one, this next one's beef cattle. Yeah, I know. It's not as cool a party trick now. I can do it with my kids when we're on family trips, but like so many other things I once thought I was cool because I could do, they are utterly unimpressed. <laughs> of course, some of you would know that growing up on the farm, dad and mom would always say, it just smells like money when they would smell that aroma. So long story short, I've dealt with probably more than my fair share when I was back at home, and I know something about it, and I know that there must have been some in the manger scene, and this should not go overlooked by us, but I do wonder why more hasn't been made of it. Maybe we can look for it in the text and see if there's any presence. Of course, we go back to this most familiar of Christmas texts, the story of Luke chapter 2. In those days, Caesar Augustus declared that everyone throughout the empire should be enrolled in the tax list. This first enrollment occurred when Serenius governed Syria, all these dates and places, given to help us know that God is taking a particular location in our history, taking up a particular residence, in humanity. 
Everyone went to their own cities to be enrolled. And since Joseph belonged to David's house and family line, he went up from the city of Nazareth in Galilee to David's city called Bethlehem in Judea. And he went to be enrolled together with Mary, who was promised to him in marriage and who was pregnant. While they were there, the time came for Mary to have her baby. And she gave birth to her firstborn child, a son, wrapped him snugly, oh, the King James with which we are acquainted says, in swaddling clothes, and laid him in a manger because there was no room for him in the inn. Well, that's funny because the Common English Bible translates the word guest room, not in at all. And I know you've heard it that way in the King James translation, and you heard it that way on the Charlie Brown Peanuts Christmas special as well, when Linus reads the line. But the interesting thing about the text is that the only other place that the word in or guest room is used in the Gospel of Luke, it is really translated as guest room or dining room most appropriately. So actually, everything you ever thought you knew about the inn might be called into question at this point, because it might have just been the guest room of extended family. It really doesn't matter though, does it? It wasn't a Motel 6. It wasn't a Holiday Inn. There was no continental breakfast. There was no room, no matter where it was. And so they were put to the manger. And this word, this word is without ambiguity. For that word in Greek for manger is used again in the Gospel of Luke. And it's used by Jesus. And it's used in reference to a stall where an ox or a donkey is tied up. Therefore, for ergo, I present to you manure. <laughs> Jesus knew it. There it was. Even in the place that God takes on our human condition, there it is. Why then do we not make more of it? Why is not more sung in our songs? Why do we not see evidence in the little manger scenes that decorate our mantles? Why? I'm not sure. Maybe it's because it wasn't all that noteworthy to the people who were there on that first night. Just think about the audience. Nearby, shepherds were living in the fields, guarding their sheep at night. The Lord's angel stood before them. The Lord's glory shone around them, and they were terrified. Again, you've heard that. They were sore afraid. The angel said, don't be afraid. Look, I bring good news to you. Wonderful, joyous news for all people. Your Savior is born today in David's city. He is Christ the Lord. This is a sign for you. You will find a newborn baby wrapped snugly and lying in a manger. And suddenly, a great assembly of the heavenly forces was with the angel praising God. And they said, glory to God in heaven and on earth peace among those whom he favors. When the angels returned to heaven, the shepherds said, Let's go right now to Bethlehem and see what happened. Let's confirm what the Lord has revealed to us. They went quickly and they found Mary and Joseph and the baby lying in the manger. There's the word again. The barn, the stall, with all that. And think of the audience that has been called in, shepherds who probably had no opportunity to stop by Bed Bath & Beyond or Bath & Body Works or whatever it is and wherever it is you can get shampoo and conditioner and body wash. No availability for that. No, they showed up smelling of sheep, not noticing the smell of the place. So maybe that's why not more is made in our songs. Maybe they didn't notice so we wouldn't either. Perhaps. Or maybe it's something else. You know, a number of years ago, it hit me. You could almost say literally. I was out running. I like to do that. I like to go for a jog. Around Fort Wayne here, every now and then, I do this. And when I take in my lungs to get a breath of fresh air, I get a whole nice breath full of bus exhaust fumes. <sighs> Can I get an amen for the bus <laughs> exhaust fumes? Yeah. But a few years ago, I was 
was serving in a small town, and so I'd get to do something I don't get to do now. I'd get to go out and run out down the country roads through the field, and oh, it was a beautiful day. It was one of those days in mid-June when the corn is just starting to crawl up almost knee high, the soybeans just about the same, the purple and white blossoms on each soybean stalk all swaying in a breeze with white clouds moved along in a blue sky. All of it birds singing seemingly for me, all of it lifting up praise of its creator, and I soaked it all in on that bright and sunny day and breathed in deeply to smell the hog confinement unit <laughs> right up the road from the little town of Lapel. And to me, it may seem odd to you, it wasn't objectionable, because to me, the farm boy, it smelled like home. It smelled like the people that I love. It smelled like the people who, yes, yeah, certainly drive me crazy, and if you ask them, I'd rather you not, frankly, if I drive them crazy or not, but it, it smelled like the people I love. So maybe, maybe the reason it's not mentioned when we sing Silent Night, maybe the reason it's not a feature of the nativity sets on our mantelpieces, and maybe the reason you never see it in the Charlie Brown Christmas Carol, is really because it's not objectionable to God? Because it's the smell of the beings, the creatures God loves? Ah, we're close, but not quite. Not quite, because in a moment of reflection, I might pause, and I might survey my own heart, and I might realize that some of the dispositions of my being kind of stink. Some of the things I want, some of the actions I have made in anger, some of the things I have said are pretty smelly. And God cannot be pleased with that. Maybe you're sitting out there tonight and say, Preacher, look, I came to light a candle tonight. Get back home to the plate of fudge. And now you're laying on a sermon. Preacher, you don't know. You don't know what's in my mind, in my heart. You don't know the mess I just came from. We had a doozy of a family gap. I won't ask for any amens tonight. <laughs> but I can tell some of you are fighting the urge to look to your right or your left. <laughs> it's true. It's true, not just our hearts, but some of our family entanglements, they downright stink. And we have noticed, we are not blind to the fact that our streets are flooded with weapons. We are dropping bombs on our siblings, on the children of our brothers and sisters, and they drop their bombs upon our brow as well. All of this violence must rise rancid and odious to God. How can God love the scent of that? How can God love and delight in the scent that rises from the injustice of so many in our world having so little when the Savior comes to be in solidarity with them and so many others in our world having so much in cold indifference it must be rancid to the God who speaks of mercy and justice to the poor. How can it be that all around the world people so easily bend their knees to other gods, material, political, and princes, and they turn away from the one who comes to be king of kings and lord of lords, the stench of our existence? How can God love that? It's the Apostle Paul who assures us that while God might not let, like and love and delight in every stink we throw up, that God does nonetheless love us and that this is the aroma that rises to God. The Apostle Paul in 2 Corinthians 2.15 
says, what do we smell like? Not the manger. We smell like the aroma of Christ's offering to God. The sacrificial love of God that visits us in a manger and carries us to a cross, that raises Christ from the dead and promises he will come again in glory. The sacrificial love of God, it is an anointing for us. So all of the rest of it is absent and unmentioned because all God smells when God turns in our direction is God's love. God's love for us. God's love for us in torn relationships. God's love for us in the midst of strife. God's love for us in the middle of every mess we've ever made. God's love for us in the midst of every conflict, every anxiety, every addiction. The aroma rising to heaven is not the stench of what we've been up to or what's going on in the manger from the created. But what rises to heaven is the aroma of the cross that is to come. The kingdom that draws near of sacrificial love. And that is why when we sing silent night, holy night, that is why when we sing that song, we do not reflect so much on our condition and on our smell and on all of our mess and all the stuff that was happening in the manger. But that is why when we sing, we reflect on God's sacrificial love for creatures like us. That is why we sing. And that is why we sing what we sing. Glory to God. Amen. With that in our mind and heart, we're going to prepare to sing that song, Silent Night. And as we do, we lift our song, raising it fully where? Of all of the turmoil and trial, tragedy and tears of our existence, but raising our song as a statement and a witness of faith that the sacrificial love of God is greater and it has visited us in a child in Bethlehem. As we sing, I want to give you one little pointer. We'll light candles. Pastor Chris, Pastor Ashley, and I will begin to pass the flame around the room. And when you light your candle, if your candle is lit, don't do this. If your candle is lit, hold it and let the person with the unlit candle light their flame on yours. And then all of us sing. For the sacrificial love of God poured out in Christ rises to heaven still, and it will forever. Amen. Let's stand and sing Silent Night.
this place and in this moment, mindful, yes, of our condition, but mindful not of our scent, we turn our attention to the King who has come, Jesus Christ who is born. I invite you, if you are able, with flame in hand and physically, to join us as we kneel to acknowledge the birth of our Savior. And if you are not, then please simply kneel within your heart in humility before the one who comes, that all people might be free. Jesus Christ, the long-awaited Messiah promised by prophets of old, is born. He has come to us to help God's people Israel and be a light unto the Gentiles. Glory to God in the highest. Peace on earth and goodwill to humankind. Amen. amen. And amen. Let us stand and sing of our great joy. For Christ is born. sacrificial love for us all and of its sweet scent which arises unto heaven both now and forever in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit and all God's people said Amen. 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 You may be seated.